Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel for another Genshin Impact video. And today I'm going to be talking about Zhongli again. This is going to be a follow up to the Is He Still Worth It video that I made a couple weeks ago at this point. And I know the footage on screen isn't directly showing Zhang Li. It's because I just got Xiao and I've been just trying to record some footage and figure out how to use Xiao. But Zhang Li's in the party, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Now, I don't talk about this often on my YouTube channel per se, but it has been a topic on my Twitch channel. And that's going to be discussing some things such as future content and what to maybe expect or what we guess might be coming in future patches in the game. Now, I feel like it's quite obvious I'm pretty much referring to leaks. And if you don't like leaks or if you consider them spoilers, then here's your warning. Please click away from this video. But again, I'm not going to actually show what I've seen up on screen. You can find these things pretty easily. They're all over Reddit. They're all over different Discord servers as well. And in the past couple of days on my video, is Zhongli still worth it in 2.4? There's been a couple comments and questions asking about with this upcoming content is Zhongli actually still going to be relevant so I just want to give my quick thought on that and I'm gonna go ahead and just give you off the bat I still think he's worth it to pull maybe he's not a must pull anymore like he's kind of been recently but even with that I still feel like there's going to be a lot that he can do for your team on top of the fact that he brings just a lot of utility to your party and to your roster and so if you don't really know there's a couple new enemies coming into the game they're going to be in Abyss Floor 12 in the 2.5 version of Abyss. And there's going to be a few of them scattered throughout the world from what I've seen. From what I understand, there's three versions of this enemy. There's a Pyro one and a Hydro one. And I'm not sure the element of the third one, but there is a third one as well. And essentially what I'm seeing here is that saying upon one of these enemies, hitting a shield, the Hydro version of them will recover 40% of both its own and its allies health. If you have Zhongli in your party, you're pretty much using him for shielding. And so if they hit your shield, they're going to recover 40% of its own HP and the enemy ally. And that's a sizable amount. That's similar to like the Karagi when they heal if you only kill one of them at a time. And then for the Pyro one, it says it's going to generate a 24 GU Pyro shield for itself and its allies. Now I'm not 100% sure what GU actually stands for, but it's the exact same kind of shield that the Heralds and the Lecters get. Those are those Abyss enemies that we fought as bosses in different story missions, and then they've also appeared in the Abyss. I believe they're in the current floor 10 at the moment, and basically you have to fight them down so their HP gets to a certain percent. Then they put a shield up and you have to break that shield to actually kill them. Now based on what I'm seeing, the Heralds, their shield is a cost of 36, and then these new enemies, the cost of it is 24. So it's not not as beefy as the Heralds and Electors shields, but it is still quite sizable. And this also affects more than Zhongli at this point, right? This affects characters like Toma, Diona, Xinyan, Beidou even, Yanfei at C4, and then I believe even Kaya can become a shielder at a certain constellation too. But as we all know, Zhongli has the best shield in the game, and so it seems like Mahoyo is very much trying to nerf the best shielder in the game. And I think that's actually pretty crazy to think about considering that this is an Archon character. But then again, if you look at someone like Venti, we haven't had enemies in quite a while that have been added to the game that can actually get crowd controlled by his ultimate. And I'm a person who's played multiple different kinds of gacha games over time, over the past like some years now. And I've seen this happen all the time. The year one characters that come out, they end up getting power crept to a certain degree. And the characters that everyone saw out in the first year of a game, once you get to year two, year three, year four, and on, they start to become a little bit more lackluster in the current meta or just the current state of the game. And it does seem like because of how, I guess you could say OP Zhongli is, because of that shield, there's a lot of people who say that's what turns the game into easy mode, or you don't even have to dodge anymore because of it, that I would imagine that's why Mahoyo is starting to implement these kind of enemies. But even with everyone calling these new enemies a nerf to Zhongli, you have to think about everything that's in the current state of the game. Sure, we have like the Rift Hounds and the Rift Wolves, and those enemies apply corrosion even if you're shielded. But still, at this point, Zhongli is still a great character to bring against them because, sure, you can get that corrosion applied to you if they hit you. 
but also you're not taking like the original damage of them hitting you because you have the shield up. You're only taking the corrosion damage. So if you have a little bit of healing, you're pretty much more than fine. He's still a great character. On top of the fact that Zhongli gives a resistance shred to enemies for all elements and physical, and you won't be interrupted in your combos at all, which is a big deal when you're applying DPS to these enemies. But even with the new enemies that are coming out, as well as like the Rift Hounds and the Rift Wolves, that makes up a very, very, very small percentage of the amount of enemies that we encounter in the game. Now, when it comes to Abyss, of course, they're going to be quite hard, though, because they're going to have a lot of HP, sure. But if you do look at the current setup for Abyss, all of these new enemies that recover 40% of their own health and also give shields to their allies, they're all in the first half of floor 12. So all that tells me is that, okay, I'll bring my Zhongli team over to the second half. That's not a problem, then. I have a couple of team comps already set up that don't use Zhongli or shields at all for Abyss runs, so I'm pretty much going to be fine. Now, I know there's a lot of people who probably run other shielders on their other team that doesn't have Zhongli. Toma just came out recently. I know a lot of people who have built him. Diona is a great shielder as well, who also provides some healing too. And that is super unfortunate that we won't be able to use them on that first half anymore, because it definitely seems like Mahoyo is trying to make us use healers and make healers more prominent. If you had Zhongli or if you had other shielded characters built really well, then you didn't really necessarily need to rely on healers as much. And I feel like, unfortunately, this is quite standard for some gacha games that I've played in the past. They kind of create a new problem. And then what they try to do is they try to sell you the solution. So the problem right now is that there's going to be this new enemy who bypasses shields. And what they're going to try to do is sell us a solution, aka Kokomi. And I'm not sure if she's getting a rerun anytime soon necessarily, but it, characters like her or even Chi Chi who can use the ocean hued clam set. And I'm sure Mahoyo is wanting to make this new set that they just put out a lot more relevant when it comes to the current state of the game. Now, of course, we have a ton of other healers in the game and they're going to be able to fill these roles too. But with how much the community said Kakomi wasn't good or that she was lackluster, I would imagine Mahoyo is going to do what they can to make this character feel more appealing overall. And I just want to say that's no knock to Kakomi mains or anything like that. I have so many friends who use her and love her and I've actually hopped on their accounts before and I think she's actually a really great unit. But similarly to this Zhongli standpoint, is she a must pull? No. And now I think Zhongli is just coming around to that range now. Is he a must pull? In my opinion, I would still spend all my primos for him. I think he's a really great character. I think he brings a ton of utility to the game. And then also as someone who's been maining him since day one, I just like love his character, love his lore, love his design. And this game has a long lifespan. I personally can't imagine that every single enemy that they introduce from now on is going to be able to get some kind of buff based on shielders or be nerfing shielders, but who's to say? And maybe if you are concerned about bringing Zhongli into fights with these enemies, then build your Zhongli for meteor damage because you can make Zhongli's meteor hit pretty hard and it petrifies the enemy and stuns them too. And just don't put up a shield against them, I guess. And that's for Abyss if you want to give yourself a challenge, I guess, on the first half of this floor 12. But in the overworld, if you see where they're at, you can also just, you know, not use him. Switch characters and take him out of the party and then swap him right back in after you've defeated them. If you've been playing the game for a while and you have some characters built out, you probably shouldn't have too many issues with overworld enemies. Personally, I feel like most enemies in the overworld are kind of a complete joke, honestly. But if you are a newer player, of course, and you're about to pick him up, I can understand the concern and maybe the pause you have on pulling him. But again, like I said, with the current state of what's in the game right now and what we even know might be coming up, I still think he's worth to pull it for. He brings so much to the table. He's a really great character. He's going to keep a lot of your characters alive. But now I'm curious, do you agree with what I had to say about Zhang Li is still a good pickup? Or do you really feel like this is direction Mahoyo might go in and shielding might become completely irrelevant in the near future? Let me know in the comment section below if you're still gonna pull for him or not, if you're gonna pull for constellations, if you already have him too. And let me know if I missed anything. When it comes to pulling for characters and spending those Prima gems, I know it can get a little nerve wracking at times. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer as best as I can in the comment section. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does just help the growth of this channel. And just to also let you know, I stream most days over at twitch.tv slash Richard Original. You can give me a follow over there where we can discuss things like this and other Genshin related topics. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.